I'm Dr. Tammy Balachek with the Center for TMJ and Sleep Disorders, and I'm pleased to bring you another edition of our series, Your Mouth is the Door to Your Health. Today I'm joined by Jonathan, one of our patients. Jonathan is in treatment for sleep apnea with our center, and he has graciously agreed to share some of his symptoms and experiences um, with our audience. So would you please tell us what you were suffering from uh, before you came to see us? Um, well, about five years ago or so, I started um, suffering from sleep apnea due to some orthodontic work that corrected um, aesthetics, not the problem. Um, and uh, 2013 summer, I had um, a major throat surgery that uh, they removed my tonsils, my uvula, and a good bit of my soft palate to help correct it. But over the years, um, just because of issues uh, with like my tongue falling back when I slept, I um, found you online and uh, made an appointment for a sleep appliance. And uh, I just, you know, looked at certified doctors for the treated sleep apnea and TMJ and. You were close. And Great. So when you say you had uh, problems with your tongue falling back, were you aware of snoring noise? Did you feel tired during the day? What were some of the physical effects that you were feeling? Um, well, I felt great after the surgery, and then slowly it kind of came back. And I noticed that I was extremely tired during the day. Um, waking up was really hard to do. Um, it just general fatigue and uh you know, I was told that I did snore, I started to snore again pretty loudly, and then um, I guess what concerned me the most was I got back to the, um, I stopped breathing during the night, and that's what really prompted me to seek out orthodontic treatment, because they told me that that would help greatly, um, you know, after the surgery. Great. So um, to become diagnosed with sleep apnea, did you go to a sleep lab and sleep overnight? Um, did you try any other treatments that are known to help sleep apnea other than the surgery? I tried weight loss. Um, I lost 50 pounds and it didn't really make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, it really was um, the way the surgeon explained it is over time, the tissue just became so enlarged from the lack of air at night and everything, that um, surgery was the only option. But before I did that, um, I did a series of sleep studies with and without the CPAP and uh, found out that my blood oxygen was dropping below 80% every 28 minutes while I slept. So not super severe, but you know, bad sure. enough to require something. Sure, sure. So. And I don't know if your doctor ever shared this with you, but there are two types of patients who have sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. One is related to being overweight, which it sounds like you lost the weight and it didn't make any improvements for you. The other type of patient is a craniofacial problem, meaning the jaw structure is too small. Mm -hmm. So when you had your orthodontics, do you recall, did they pull teeth for you? Did you wear a headgear? Were there, was there anything that pulled your jaw back or would have made your mouth smaller? Um. Basically, uh, I did have an underbite before the major problem started, and um, the orthodontist sought to correct that. Um, so he used banding to pull my jaw back, and he mm -hmm. also um, used orthodontia to bring my teeth in. So it did right. kind of crowd things a little more, and I noticed like the severity of the sleep apnea increased exponentially after the braces came off. Right. Um, because snoring wasn't a huge problem before that, but um, okay. it also affected uh, my TMJ, like it irritated that, so I right. had a series of problems. So Jonathan, you mentioned um, TMJ. TMJ is the name of the jaw joint located right in front of the ear canal. And the lower jaw position determines how our jaw joint sits there, and if it's too far back, it can pinch in the jaw, cause clicking, popping sounds, headaches, jaw pain. But the position of the lower jaw also determines our airway size. So when the lower jaw is brought back, and uh, what you're saying is you started with an underbite like this, instead of moving the upper jaw forward to keep that lower jaw wide, or keep that lower jaw front, the uh, mechanics you had pushed your lower jaw back. 
And so you can appreciate how that made your airway more narrow and that made you prone to sleep apnea. And that was proven with weight loss didn't make a difference for you. So you also mentioned trying a CPAP machine. A CPAP machine is a mask that's worn over the nose or the nose and mouth, and it blows air into the airway. So for that lower jaw that's back, it's going to blow it and try to keep positive pressure in there to blow up the airway. Do you remember any kind of problems that you had with the CPAP? Um, the biggest problem I had is I did the nasal CPAP. Um, because I refused to shave my beard. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, and the issue I had is I kept opening my mouth, and uh, that just, it, I guess, you know, caused problems with the pressure and whatnot. And um, it was just very uncomfortable because it was air being blown up my nose, and I didn't really sleep, and I just was not, I couldn't adapt to it, so. Sure. So he tried a CPAP machine, the air went in through the nose, but with the mouth opening, it came right back out your mouth and it exactly. wasn't effective. Yeah. Could you tell our audience a little bit about what you wear now for your sleep apnea? I have um, a sample one here. Yes, uh, it is kind of like a retainer for the top and bottom teeth that's uh, connected by bands. And the nice thing about this is when I come in for my checkups, uh, Dr. Tammy uh, checks my bite and everything like that and adjusts the bands. Uh, the last time I was in, um, she brought my jaw a little further forward when I slept and that's actually helped even more. And um, But it's really comfortable to wear, easy to take care of. Um, I really, I notice uh, a big difference if I don't wear it at night, like if I fall asleep on the sofa or something like that, which happens. Um, but no, in general, uh, I do get like much higher quality sleep and it's nowhere near as difficult to take care of as I thought it would be. Um, but uh, yeah, I just pop it in and it kind of holds my teeth apart and pulls my jaw forward a little bit. And Great. Um, it's really comfortable. So instead of wearing this mask attached to hoses to a bedside unit mm -hmm. that makes noise during the night, you're able to put this mouth guard in yep. And these straps on the side help keep your mouth closed, so that's eliminated the mouth breathing. And um, the only downside to this is it bypasses the nasal airway, and that's what the CPAP machine was intended to do. So in those cases, we do sometimes recommend nasal surgery or wearing Breathe Right strips, um, but as long as you can breathe through your nose, then this yeah. is a very good alternative. So you've decided upon one more step to your treatment, um, would you like to share a little bit about that? Yes. Um, when I went in for orthodontia the first time, I was told that um, the roof of my mouth uh, was fairly narrow. And I was told by my original orthodontist that that could only be corrected surgery, uh, with surgery. And I really didn't want to go through that. Um, it was extremely invasive. Um, so when um, I met uh, Dr. Balachek, uh, she mentioned that there was a way to expand um, your palate uh, without surgery. Uh, so she talked to me more about that and um, decided to go with that. And uh, we're going to see how that goes. I guess I start in February. Yeah, yeah. So um, Jonathan mentioned before how his first time with braces, the lower jaw was pulled back to fit underneath the upper jaw, which was an underbite. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time we're gonna use retainers to expand the upper jaw. Everybody has a genetic potential of what their upper jaw should be, but due to growth factors and environmental influences that can be limited as we're growing. So that can still be turned on in an adult. And then when the upper jaw is bigger, his lower jaw will be able to come forward to where it used to be before the first procedure. So we're really excited to um, get that going and, and help you breathe better. And um, so I wanted to thank you so much. Do you have any parting words um, before we end this session for today? Um, not really, just I've been really happy with the process so far and it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. And it's definitely improved my quality of life. Great, well thank you so much for joining us. Our office is located on Route 10. Um, the address is 2433 Morgantown Road, and that's in Reading. We are right next to the Penske Building and across from Dan's at Green Hills Restaurant. 
Our website is www.tmjsleepcenter.com and we can be reached at 610-796-2835. Thank you. Thank you.